Uh, my name is David Pascal Delorier. I work for Cold Front Labs, Inc. And on Drupal.org, uh, I'm known as Spot Zero. So if you spend enough time in the issue queues, you might run into me. So, context. Uh, so far, in, the, uh, in three of the sessions that I've seen today, three of them have had full page um, slides where the title of the slide said context. In Drupal, context is a really nasty word because it gets used for everything. Um, so what kind of context am I going to be talking about? I'm not going to talk about cont contextual links from Drupal core. Um, I'm also not going to be talking about the context module context, even though the context module also has context plugins, not those context plugins. Um, I'm also not talking about views contextual filters. You can use panel context with views, and views can actually be panels context, but that's not contextual filters in views. <laughs> so we're going to talk about context in panels. And they're really not so bad. Oh, except for the context in panels actually come from C tools, not panels, even though you're going to use them in panels. But they're really good other than all that. <laughs> So contexts, what are they? Well, they're contexts about what you're viewing. Um, they're uh, actually a structured way of storing data or loading data, um, accessing data, and passing data, and displaying data. And that's really all they are. And they're all implemented as CTools plugins. Uh, is everyone familiar with CTools plugins? All right. This might be a scary presentation, but you'll love it. <laughs> so what modules will we need? We'll need C tools, because this is where the panels context come from. We'll need panels, because panels context go into panels. And we'll probably need page manager, which actually comes in C tools, and maybe views, and then views panel panes, which comes in panels. Everything clear? If anyone needs any to ask questions, just stop me. I can understand how some of this could be a little confusing. So before we start looking at context, I didn't get a big, uh, a big reaction when I said, who here has used panels? So maybe let's talk about what panels are. So panels is a module that lets you lay out pretty much anything in Drupal. Um, it lets you develop custom pages. It lets you override pages that exist uh, with Page Manager. So if you wanted to do something like say, you know the node edit page is really kind of a mess. Uh, what if I wanted to override the node edit page and take a, get rid of most of that stuff? Or what if I wanted to show a view on the node edit page? Or what if I wanted to show different blocks on the node edit page? Or what if I wanted to um, show different node edit pages to different kinds of users? Well, Panels uh, gives you a way to do that, even though it's really just uh, a layout tool. So why don't we take a look at, why don't we take a look at Panels? So this is Drupal. You've probably seen it before. Um, and one of the features of panels are, that's the easiest to understand, are panels pages. Um, pages are panels layouts that have a URL uh, that lets you get to that panel. So we'll go through this quickly so we can get to the real meat, which are uh, contacts. So panels, they have a name. They have a path, or pages uh, have a name and path, um, and various options. We'll just do this quickly. Um, since pan Panels is a layout tool, you can actually choose what kind of layout you want to have for the content displayed on this panel. Um, the, it comes with uh, Panels Builder, which actually lets you build layouts dynamically. So if you wanted to have a three column layout, you could just put in three columns, and then you'd be able to put content in those three columns. Or if you wanted to have um, 
uh, a layout where you had a top bar and then columns under that and more complicated rows. It lets you dynamically build that. But let's build a boring site instead. One single column. Oh, more stuff to configure this panel page. And this is basically it. We chose to have a panel with one middle column and so we can lay out stuff into that panel page. Add content. And, uh, and we have various Drupal stuff available for us to stick on this page. So let's find some things. Shortcuts. Uh, let's put powered by Drupal. There we are. This page will be just powered by Drupal. So let's save that. So if we go to the site, there we are. We have a page that's powered by Drupal. Um, panels is also outside of the regular block layout, so it gets rendered as the content of the page. So if you look, the standard Drupal blocks, because this is the standard install, is still there but we have stuff inside the panel. So if we had a, a different layout that had two columns, um, the columns would actually be displayed in the content section. So that's essentially what panels are in a nutshell. But where they can get really powerful is with their ability to support context. So why don't we add something to load in there? Just an article. Um, <laughs> All right. So we created that lovely node. So we have this node. Um, let's say we'd like to display certain pieces of this node on our panel page. Let's go back to our panel page called name. So one of the things you can load are contexts, and contexts are just pieces of data from your site. So if we go to context, we can choose what kind of data we want to load into this panel layout. Um, since we created a node for this panel layout, let's add that. So I'll add a node. There we are. It's called node title. And it'll be identified in the UI as node. Save that. So now when we go back to content, panels knows about this piece of content because it's uh, a context of this panel. So it has all the contextual information available to it. Uh, so if we go to add content, we now have uh, node stuff. Here are the fields attached to the node. And uh, we also have node tokens. So we can use those tokens to just put in data. But now we could sort of take parts that we like out of that node. Let's just take the title. and. We can over, we'll just, we won't link it to the node. We'll just put it on there. Put it on top. So if we save that and go to our panel. Right. If we go to the right path. So reviewing our page, uh, which is our panel at this URL. That panel is loading a specific node uh, into context, and then that panel is taking a piece of data out of that context and, uh, and rendering it for us. Though in hindsight, oh no, maybe I should have picked a more interesting no name other than node title. Yep. The other thing that we can do when we have context 
or we can actually use that as replacement tokens for other pieces of data. So the page title of our other page is still site install. So why don't we override that with data out of the node. Let's take the node title, make that the site name. So if you've used tokens before in Drupal, you'll probably recognize the syntax. And if you've recognized the syntax, you've used tokens. So now the, uh, the title is updated to be the, uh, the title of the node plus the word panel. Uh, so we can use different parts of these contacts that are loaded into the page to make dynamic pages um, and really separate uh, the content from the display. So the content is in the node, and the node contains the data model that we're using to store all our content, and the panel can use that as a data source to really control, uh, intricately control all the display of that particular node. So what else can we do with context? Well, um, we can, the first problem is loading context. Uh, as you saw, we just statically loaded a specific piece of content onto a page. Um, most of the time, that's not really good enough. We want to make pages that are dynamic. We want them to be able to load context depending on what's going on. So one of the other ways we can load context are from arguments. So let's go back to that page, the panels page page. Panels pages can support URL arguments. Um, and panels will actually automatically detect when we place URL arguments. So right now our path is just path. Um, but what if our, we wanted our path to have an argument in it? Sort of like when our, we pass arguments in the path to a view. So we can just add a variable with percent and then an identifier. And now we have an arguments tab. So panels has detected that our path actually, that this panel page gets an argument um, and we can control what that does. So arguments will load a context based on whatever is passed to them. So let's assign a context to this particular argument and uh, we can make it a node ID, which will load a node context based on that idea, ID that's passed. So since we're loading it from there, we don't need this node context. Let's just get rid of that. Go back to our layout, update things to use the new context that we've created. Now let's give it a new title too. I'm not sure these terms have descriptions because they're tags. You know what, let's change the relationship. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> All right, taxonomy term. I was hoping to get the term name, but oh well. Maybe that's not a field I can get. I can get other information about the term and use it in replacements. So let's just update the title with it then. So later on, or later on, in a few minutes, um, I'll actually show you, we're gonna pull off the panels of panels, look under the hood, and we'll go over how all this is implemented. And so when I go there and see, hey, why the heck can't I get the taxonomy name? That would have been nice. We'll go look at actually how this is implemented and how we could actually add that if we wanted it. So that's saved. There we are. So it is tagged with the, I think the terms, Montre or Drupal Camp Montreal, so the first tag is Drupal. Uh, 
All right. So that's pretty much all the ways we can load contacts. Oh, right. There's another way of loading contacts. Um, we can actually build custom contacts from a view. So the results of a view can be another context. Um, and that is actually implemented as a views display. So if you use views, they can be displayed in different ways. If you have the views content panes module on, one of the available displays is context. So your view, the results of your view will actually be available as a context. And any views with this display will show up in the, on the context menu. So when you want to add context to your site, um, you'll be able to. I'll give you a quick look at what that looks like, but I won't build the view. So I actually already have a view called uh, Drupal Camp Montreal Demo Context. Uh, this is a view. It doesn't really, oh, sorry, that's not it. Anyways, it'll actually be named view um, context. I guess it's not on this site. Uh, it's just a matter of creating the view. All of the fields that you have in the results will be available as data. Um, we won't go through creating the view since we don't have that much time because we won't get to look at very much code at this rate. But uh, trust me, you can do it. All right. The other thing we can do is make deci decisions in the panel based on the context that are loaded. Uh, and there's really three different ways we can do that. Uh, we, can we can use a context as an access rule. Uh, we can use a context or data from context as visibility rules for individual elements that are displayed on a panels page or in a panel. And we can actually use them as selection rules if you have mul multiple panels layouts that display on the same page. So uh, here we have access. We can control the access rules to this pan panel page to make the access rules uh, dynamic. And it can be, and it is done by comparing things into loaded contacts. So uh, we could take the current user is always in context, so it's the user viewing this. So we could compare the user rule to say that only logged in users are allowed to visit this page. Or we could say logged in users are not allowed to view this page in the case of like the login page. And we can also use different access rules depending on uh, the other kinds of content that are available. The visibility rules um, are exactly the same as access rules, except they are on specific pieces of content. So we can add a visibility rule. Um, the vis visibility rule works the same way. It's just another access rule, except it applies to a specific chunk of the content displayed in the panel page. And it will say, if this access rule fails, then just don't display this section of content. The last is selection rules. So on panel pages, sorry, did you have a question? Okay. Uh, on panel pages, you can have multiple what are called variants, and they are just separate layouts. So the part uh, from the mouse cursor down, you're going to have multiple of those. So if you wanted to have different layouts for whatever reason, uh, for different things, if you were going to show a different page, to uh, users of different roles for the same thing. Uh, if you were overriding the node edit page and you wanted um, users with different access to be able to both create nodes of that type but sort of have a different interface for it, you could control the layout here and have different variants. Uh, and the way that panels will select which variant is actually shown to which user are, is using the selection rules. So the selection rules are once again exactly the same as the access rules. Uh, except they just control which variant is displayed. All right, this is the fun part. Let's look under the hood and see how this is implemented. Before we go any further, are there any questions? About, we've sort of powered through a lot of stuff. All right, everyone's good, perfect. So let's look under the hood and see how this is implemented. 
So, like I said earlier, <laughs> all of these uh, contacts and panel contacts, even though you use them in the panels module, are actually in the CTools module. And they're implemented as CTools plugins. So a CTools plugin, for people who don't have experience with CTools plugins, is uh, a functionality that the CTools module offers to give you a dynamic way of, lay of, of, of loading code that, sort of, that does similar things. So if you're writing a module, you can actually uh, develop your own type of CTools plugins and then use CTools to load um, the information about your plugins or load a specific plugin. So if you wanted to have uh, a set of CTools plugins that, uh, I, uh, what's a good example of CTools plugins? Uh, feeds Tamper, if you've ever used the Feeds module, uh, everything Feeds can Tamper can do are actually uh, CTools plugins. So the plugin in Feeds Tamper to alter the data so it's a multi-value field um, or that converts a date from a certain format to another for format. All of those are just Feeds Tamper plugins. So Feeds Tamper can say, uh, hey CTools, give me all, the, uh, all, all of the Feeds Tamper plugins available in every module on the site and then CTools can give it a list of those plugins. And then Feeds Tamper can make all of the plugins available to the user, even though they may not just be in one module. So CTools plugins also, or CTools itself, uses CTools plugins to make its own plugin, uh, plugins available. So it's generally in, or that is in CTools, Plugins. So these are the CTools plugins that CTools pl C itself defines. Uh, before we go in there, one more thing about CTools plugins. CTools plugins depends on a hook uh, that modules that provide CTools plugins implement. And it is C or hook CTools plugins directory. And it is the directory that contains a specific type of plugins, or a specific type of plugin. So the plugins can have an owner, which is the module that defines that plugin type, and then they can have a plugin type. So this is this, this uh, a short implementation of that hook. All it says is, my plugins are in the plugins directory but only say that to the CTools module because it only implements CTool plugins. If you wanted to make it more generic and be able to put any CTools plugins in one directory, you could just sort of comment this logic out and any module looking for CTools plugins will look in your directory or look in your plugins directory for those. Is that big enough? All right, so here are the plugins that CTools um, exposes. And the ones that we're interested in are obviously context plugins, uh, access plugins, argument plugins, and relationship plugins. The first being content plug, the first that, that we're mostly interested in are context plugins. And a context plugin is what actually stores um, the, the different types of data that we'll be using as context inside of, um, inside of panels. And uh, it's really everything that is available when we load, just load a con context. So these are the various, these are actually a list of the context plugins that are available on the site. So if we go here and look at the context plugins, these are the, the file versions that correspond to every one of those elements. And we'll look at a, a simple CTools uh, plug or context. So every CTools plugin starts with a plugin array and then something else, which is actually the implementation. Sorry, let me shrink that. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So every, every CTools plugin has a plugin variable that holds um, the structure for that plugin. Um, in the case of <laughs> when you're implementing your own plugins, this structure can really be whatever you want. Um, it, for context, access, uh, argument, and um, relationship plugins that we're looking at right now, really what they are is a structured array that contains callbacks for this particular plugin. So a context, uh, or context plugin contains uh, a title, which is what kind of context it is, a description, um, and more importantly, it contains uh, a context callback, which is what actually creates um, that particular context, so it'll initialize the data. Uh, if it has any, if CTools is actually passing data into that context and not loading an, into, an empty context, that callback will be what deals with that to, uh, to actually build the context if you want to load more data. Um, it is listed whether it's available in the UI um, and various other features. As you, uh, as you de dig deeper into CTools, you can find all kinds of available features on the CTools plugins that are uh, more or less documented. <laughs> uh, one, of the, one of the big functions of CTools contacts is the convert list. So your CTools context contains some kind of data. But to expose that data to, uh, to anything that's using that context in panels, uh, it needs to know, panels needs to have a way to know what data is actually available or what kinds of data are available from that context. So this is a string context. It just holds a simple string. Most of the time when this context is created, it's if you're creating it from a URL argument. So if you, if you had slash something, uh, that something could be all put into one string. So this context plugin for a string makes two kinds of data available to panels if it wants to render that string. Uh, it makes the raw string that CTools received into that context available, and it also uh, makes uh, the NHTML safe version available. Convert list can actually also be a callback to a function that returns a list. So if your context, and we'll take a look at an example of that in a second. So if your context actually has, uh, or the data available to a context is dynamic, uh, you can have a function that generates the list of things that are available to that context. Uh, context one of the other play, one of the other important. Uh, callbacks that the CTools context plugins also have are um, convert, which is what actually does the work. So this is what's called when someone extracts some of the data that you've made available through that context and displays it. So if I want to get the HTML safe version of, a, of that string, I would call CTools context string convert with the context and, the, uh, and HTML safe as the argument. So we'll keep looking at string since it's a, it's a very simple context plugin. Um, it just essentially loads a new context, sorry, loads a new context, uh, says it's a string. If it's got data coming in, it loads it there and, uh, and returns the context. And then it has context string convert, also very simple. It just returns the two types of data, very straightforward. So let's look at the other time, types of context plugins that you probably will be using if you're writing your own. So the next uh, one is our argument, our argument, argument plugins. So argument plugins actually, I think I have an order of these. Oh wow, that's excellent. All right, so argument plugins are essentially, uh, well, they, they load context based on an argument. So they receive a string and they create a context. So all of these plugins, that's what they do. Uh, if we look at the node ID 
um, argument. We assume that it's going to be pretty simple. We know it gets a string. It's got to convert that into a number somehow, and then probably run node load on it. So let's take a look if it's that actually that simple. So as a title, description, uh, context, which is the callback that it is used to create a context from this argument, and then uh, some other stuff to configure context. So we just have this context to create an argument from uh, a node ID. So it gets an argument and uh, any other configuration. Uh, if it's empty, just return an empty node context. Otherwise, if it's, a, if it's already a node object, stick it into the context and return it. Um, if it's not numeric, then fail, because node IDs are usually numeric. Otherwise, node load and return the, and uh, node load, if the node doesn't exist, exist, fail. Otherwise, create a node context with the node in it. So context, ar or context, context argument plugins are pretty much as straightforward as you expect. Get an argument, return a context. Oh, um, keyword also says what kind of context they, it should be expected for this to return. So uh, the next kind of plugins are access plugins. Let's take a look at which one is going to be a good one. How about string equals? So string equals, um, as you can probably guess by its name, is an access plugin that returns true or false if a string context is equal to another string that's entered in the user interface. Um, and it's implemented pretty much like we'd expect for something for that to do. Uh, it has a callback to do the access check. Um, this particular plugin needs a settings form because it's comparing something to a string. Um, and all access, uh, call, all access plugins have summaries. And that's just what's displayed in, in, uh, what's displayed in the UI for the users. So the, we have a, a standard fo Drupal form to get the string, and then an access check, which is essentially compare the value and return true or false based on that. And then lastly, a relationship plugin. So relationships, they load a context from another context. All of those plugins do essentially that and are named um, pretty, or, or named in such a way where uh, you can kind of tell what they do. Um, terms from node probably loads the term, the taxonomy terms that are attached to the node, and users from node will load the users that are um, that are load user, the users that are attached to a node context. So create a user context from a node context. Pretty much, if you've been paying attention, we probably don't need to dive into this too deep. Um, it's implemented in sort of a really, really similar way. You have a context callback uh, for creating the context, users from node. Um, we have a required context, which says what context needs to exist for this relationship to be available. Obviously, if we're loading users from a node, we need a user context. Or sorry, we need a load node context, and we will provide a user context. Uh, and then we have the callback to it. Uh, it accepts the context, and then gets the UID from the context, and then user loads the user loads that and then creates a user context from the account that was user loaded. So um, the best place for resources uh, on if you want to write your own context and use context uh, are actually in C tools. 
Uh, CTools has lots of examples of the different kinds of context plugins you can have and uh, examples of them working. They come with CTools, so you can dig in and take a look if you want to implement your own. Um, other resources that are available, I actually made the, I have these slides available at this URL, but I have uh, a module that has all the basic stuff for creating your own CTools context or of any kind of plugins. So these are shell plugins uh, in this particular module. Uh, it has a shell plugin for access, for arguments, for context, and for relationships. And those plugins are available on the site um, because that module is turned on. Even though that context doesn't actually contain any data, it's mostly empty. So I think we're pretty much out of time at this point. Um, so does anyone have any questions?